Hi, this is Polly Buckingham. I'm reading from a manuscript in progress, a poetry manuscript in progress called Why the Stars Drink Wine in Tennessee. This first poem is called St. Jude and the Stars. And it's worth knowing that St. Jude uh, is the patron saint of lost causes. St. Jude and the Stars. If the moon controls the tides, the stars control ghost crabs that scurry over the night sand, white paper hats that fly off our heads when we die, the nickel pupils of a clown, the fool's first communion, poppy seeds moved from place to place by broken birds, the holes in our hearts where tiny magicians juggle the shadows of rabbits. Here, stars, over here! Another speck of the deceased, another disc of the doomed, a hole in the hip bone of the skeleton of love, a dandelion whirligig floating on the breeze, the eyes of waves white in the turning wind. The fool, wrapped in a cloak of doves, finds me alone in a field beside a rusted wheelbarrow where my shadow lies. She's broken her pelvis, I say, and the fool checks her heart with his sand dollar stethoscope, takes her temperature with the shard of a thermometer. Six weeks in bed, and she'll be just like new, he says. How will I live without her? I crawl into the wheelbarrow as if it were the grandest bed and hold her bony gray self against my body. We will spoon like this six weeks or until the moon disappears and the stars come out and tell me what needs to be done. And this one's called Night Walker. I wake to moonlight that pushes me through certain un uncertain doors out into the garden. The wind has woven white flowers into the gate. A loon calls from across the lake and coyote songs rise from the ridges. Moonlight illumines the greenhouse. Like a dreamer in a minor key, I pull open the glowing door. The kale plants hunch like ghosts. The tomato vines throw webs of shadows across the path. Do not wake me from this trance in which everything sings. Interloper. An enormous mullen plant rises from the center of my garden. It arrived like an alien. Its leaves are the velvet ballet slippers of a mother giant under which mushrooms cluster. Its seed pod points upward. By fall, it will compete with the sunflowers in height and it will light up the night sky with its yellow candle. Another poem about love. The rickety rack of the garbage truck brings the stranger into my garden. Goodbye, yells the garbage man. Thanks for the ride, the stranger yells back. Her eyes are filled with faraway rain. What have you decided about love, she asks, and shakes ladybugs from her hair. It is a transient dream, I say. Light sparkles on the lake like a thousand blind eyes. And this one is called The Beekeeper at the End of the World. It opens with a quote from Sheshwa Miwosh. On the day the bee, excuse me, on the day the world ends, a bee circles a clover. A fisherman mends a glimmering net. Oh, here's the poem, The Beekeeper at the End of the World. I meet the beekeeper in a field of prairie grass and wildflowers. The sky is pink and he's had a long day and all he wants is to watch the bees. I settle down in the flowers and watch with him. We do not speak. It is a super duper evening. The noise of the bees is not what I'd expected. Neither is he. And these next few get shorter. <laughs> uh, the elusive stream. The well dries up 
and the well guy is broken down on the side of the road. Even the potable water truck is broke down. In the bottom of your well, microorganisms dance and sing in their gowns and robes of mud and green. Your friends in the garden dig a little deeper. You do too, as you gaze at the lake and the dusty road in between. All the stars. Who has come to the screen door tonight? A small frog, a moth, some ghosts. Who has shaken the tree? Night birds, a squirrel, a fractured moon. Who has fallen from bed? Just me. I gaze up out the broken window. All the stars wave good luck. The Night Tree The butterflies of death rise up in a blue fog. In the distance, a ladder and a canvas of stars. Birds on the fence line talk of your arrival. Glimpses of Neptune's creek shine in my dreams, like broken mirror pieces seeking each other. The Night Tree shakes out a dust of stars. Just waking. Drinking tea from the puppet cup. Rain, one drop at a time, on the tin roof and the stovepipe chimney and the gutter, rings. The blue-eyed bee circles the sunflowers in the white dawn. The air is full of bells. And then I've got uh, two more. This one's called Listen, Little Fisherman. Listen, Little Fisherman, please do not cast beneath the dock where the legendary fish has not been caught. He is our dream shadow, our Amazon rainforest, our night of blue breath. Without him, the stars will go out one by one. We'll walk sleepless beside the metal dog, watched by the experts in their box. Without him, little fisherman, the lanternfish will go dark and the lake will dry up. Your boat will get caught in a snare of hooks and mud, and all the bright buoys will sink. Surely you must understand how deeply we are fed by the deep. And finally, this poem the rest of the story. Never visit Payne's house. Remember when you invited her to your party? She showed up naked and threw up on your floor. You're still trying to forget what happened to the cat. Don't forget. Imagine the rest of the story. Your little tabby crier in that jagged, rusty house. Don't walk up that walkway with its dead flowers and the rattlesnakes and wasps. It's okay to set a place at the table for all you have lost, to gaze into their starry nothing eyes and feel far away. But don't step on that porch where the dead dog never dies and the mean men never become nice. Don't ball your hand into a knocking fist. The road ahead is long and dusty enough. Pain will find you when she must. She'll be dressed as a princess with the face of a crone. She'll carry a sunflower basket with potions that transform. Thank you.